Welcome to Red Handed Robin. Official novel by Hitter Missy, released a few days back for Nano Reno 2020. About a whimsical, rambunctious jewel thief named Robin and her loyal bodyguard. Looking to make a break for it on the train. When they read into Robin's childhood friend turned detective. Can can she escape with her heist? Or will her lies catch up to her? Let's find out. All aboard the Whirlwind Express, the first ever train to connect the capital cities of Zephyr and Gales. Officially the most luxurious train in the world, no expense was spared on this groundbreaking maiden voyage. With one of our private luxury cabins, you'll be traveling in style as we make history on this cross-country trip. I reread the I re I reread the ticket as I waited anxiously in the boarding line. Beside me, my traveling companion spoke in a hushed voice, so as not to be overheard. There's blood on it. Won't that be suspicious? Jay, do you see the people in this queue? I very much doubt the ticket taker wants to cause a fuss for some of the wealthiest people in the country. He probably won't even notice. I was partly trying to convince myself. Jay had a point. A blood splattered ticket was bound to draw at least some attention when the clientele was this important. Won't they check our names? He continues to whisper, but it wasn't really necessary. In front of us, a woman clad in old fur was loudly admonishing an attendant who was trying to shepherd her five excited dogs aboard. It was causing quite a scene. I don't think so. There's no name on the ticket. Just relax and act like you belong here. Mm -hmm. After many angry threats and the calling of a manager, the attendant was replaced with someone else. The woman entered the train, pets in tow, and our turn finally came. Thanks, Karen. The new attendant called us forward and held out his hand. With, a, with, a, with as much flippant confidence as I could muster, I turned the ticket over to him. Hmm. As he gave the ticket a thorough once-over, I saw his eyes linger on the splotch of red. So much for him not noticing. Is this blood? <laughs> no! Blood? Oh my goodness, no! It's actually quite an embarrassing story. I've been looking forward to this trip for some time. The other night I had too much to drink. I took the ticket out to reread the wonderful little description of my excitement. Oh, well, you can see what happened. Can you imagine? Me and my nightclothes absolutely soaked in wine. The fabric is so thin, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure my servant's got quite an eyeful. Right, Jay? Jay rolled his eyes, as the attendant blushed and stammered out a reply. Ah, uh -uh, yes, I suppose I can uh, picture it. Listen to me, for counting such a lewd story. I suppose you must think I'm very unladylike my hand to my chest and tried to look bashful and demure. It was a stupid thing to be embarrassed about, but the attendant struck me as the type to try and comfort a woman in distress. Uh, it's alright, miss. That sort of thing happens to everyone. <laughs> I know you're just trying to be kind. He awkwardly places his, placed his hand on my shoulder. <laughs> Should I punch him? And then quickly removed it. Eh, 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 him. Everything seems to be in order here. He had the ticket back to me with his fumbling hands. Please wait over there for a moment. Another attendant will be by shortly to escort you to your personal cabin. The two of us left the queue and moved to where the man had indicated. Under his breath, Jay started his usual nagging. I feel like as far as choices go, we could have made that work if we had said that it was blood. Uh, Dolly, it was blood. I... Oh, I... I cut myself on a piece of paper and got some drops on it. Oh, gosh. You're always giving too much information. Wouldn't a simple yes or no have sufficed? I scoffed. Mine's like telling a story. A well-crafted lie becomes believable precisely because of all the little details. Did you come up, did you come up with that by yourself? 
Would you believe me if I said I did? It certainly sounded pretentious enough. Regardless, I'd appreciate being left out of your stories. I'm not as quick on my feet as you. Oh, but it's so fun to watch you squirm. Mm -hmm. Another attendant approached and waved for us to board. Just as we were about to step off the platform, though, however, a man carelessly crossed our path, nearly colliding with Jay. Uh, oh, uh, do excuse me. I wasn't looking where I was going. I suppose both of us are quite clumsy. Hello, you. I, I beg your pardon? Ah, forgive me. I overheard you talking to the attendant. Must be an earnest person to share such an embarrassing story with someone you just met. I mean, everyone in the queue was probably picturing your, uh, predicament. Something about this man was setting off alarm bells in my head. Was he intentionally eavesdropping? And why does that feel so... nostalgic? Uh, miss? You're bothering us. Move. Uh, yes, of course. My apologies. He quickly stepped out of the way. With a small bow, he motioned for us to board ahead of him. Hmm. After you, my lady. <laughs> I tried to keep my composure as a realization hit me. I have to get away from him and think. Uh, yes, well, let's go then, Jay. The attendant, who'd been looking on awkwardly, jumped back to attention. I I can I take your luggage for you? Jay tightened his grip on our cases and didn't answer. I know, that's quite all right. My companion here is full more than capable. Uh, very well. This way, if you please. Hmm. Hmm. You're on to something already. Once inside, I could see that the whirlwind was truly a marvel. It almost felt as though we weren't on a train at all. Even my cabin looked like something out of a luxury hotel. There was a, this was a giant leap above the lodgings we had grown used to after traveling undercover the last few days. Is that a full-sized bed? Rich people are ridiculous. What's wrong with a normal passenger compartment? I wonder how much these tickets cost. The bed was indeed large and inviting. I wanted nothing more than to dive in and try it out, but there were more pressing matters to attend to. Jay, that man on the platform, I think I know him. Jay stiffened, and I could see him immediately assume his uh, professional mentality. How? He used to work for my family when I was a child. We were quite close, actually. That, that is, until... I chose my words carefully. Jay didn't need to know the details. Until he was let go. I must have been around ten or so. I never saw him again after that. Putting his hand to his chin, he began to pace. That would have been, what, over a decade ago? I tried to guess my age? How rude! He continued to pace without answering. It was clear he wasn't in the mood for playful banter. Fair. On the platform, he called me my lady. That's how all the servants referred to me. I'm almost certain that was him. Jay stopped in his tracks and thought for a moment. Then he swiftly grabbed our luggage and headed for the cabin door. What are you doing? This is too dangerous. If someone's recognized you, we need to leave. Now. I thought this is how he would react. I even considered not telling him at all. But being recognized was dangerous for both of us. It would have been worse to keep him in the dark. I'm not leaving. Excuse me. We can't leave. You said yourself, after what we've done, it's not safe for us in Zephyr anymore. By an enormous stroke of luck, we find ourselves on the fastest way out of the country. This is literally our ticket to freedom. Jay stood frozen in the doorway, considering his options. If you want to leave, go ahead. I got on perfectly fine by myself before you started following me around like some lost puppy. That seemed to wake him up. He turned on his heel and glared at me, incredulous. Perfectly fine? You call that perfectly fine? No, in a manner of speaking. If it weren't for me, you'd be dead and buried in that perverted psychopath's garden. Oh. Hmm. He was getting annoyed now. Time to start pushing some buttons. If it weren't for me, you'd be the one holding the shovel. Or perhaps that's what you want. 
to go back to serving perverted psychopaths. Beating their victims for them and digging their graves. Oh. He looked like he was about to say something particularly nasty, but was stopped short by a loud whistle. The train lurched forward and began to gather speed. Ah, shit. Well, I suppose that's settled then. He slammed the luggage down and stormed over to me, leaning in so his face was inches from mine. You're an infuriating woman, do you know that? I think I'm beginning to understand why that bastard wanted me to murder you. Even before he found out you were robbing him blind. Hey now. I do seem to attract the murderous type. Maybe I just have one of those faces. Is that a shot at me? Hmm. Are you, are you coinciding that you're attracted to me after all? You're too much trouble. He sighed, resigning himself to his fate. Oh, I need a drink. Surely they wouldn't allow their steam pesters to go without alcohol for a whole 48 hours. Finally removing himself from my personal space, he began rifling through drawers and cabinets. I thought the issue was settled, but apparently Jay wasn't satisfied. As he searched, the lecture continued. What's the likelihood that the man from the platform recognizes you in return? Am I psychic? How could I possibly know that? Make a guess, then. <sighs> in truth, it was extremely likely that he would have recognized me. He probably already recognized you. He acted like we were strangers. Could I be wrong? Like you said, it's been over a decade since we've last seen each other. That whole my lady, a servant thing. That can't be just uh, his way of talking to everybody. That's gotta be... I should say, that's gotta be his way of hinting to us that he recognized us. So it was a decade. Over a decade, huh? Hmm, so that would make you at least... <clears throat> now who's infuriating? Didn't your mother ever teach you how to treat a lady? <laughs> he scoffed at that. Only had to do their dirty work. Perhaps you could fill in the gaps for me. <laughs> Are you flirting? I didn't think you were capable. Ah, there we go. Opening the cabinet door wide revealed a collection of colorful bottles. He retrieved a paint but particularly dull one and poured its contents into two glasses. If he had recognized me, I, th I should think he would have said something. Jay gave a slight pause, but quickly recovered and handed me one of, his, one of the drinks. Had a thing for you then, did he? Hmm, but he didn't even remember you. So it must have been you who had a thing for him. Shots fired. He swirled the liquid in the glass, trying to look uninter uninterested. And you say you're not attracted to me. Now who's the liar? I'm tired of this conversation. Let's talk about something else. Oh. <laughs> Cute banter. I like these two already. Feeling rather annoyed by this line of questioning, I took a sip of my drink as well. What the hell? Ugh, what is this? It's awful! Jay smiled and downed the rest of his own. Does it not suit the lady's delicate palate? Perhaps she ought to run back to her daddy's mansion and drink only the finest wines instead. <laughs> you picked this one to tease me, then. <laughs> Fair. He did his best to maintain an austere facade, but sometimes someone more playful would peer through the, the cracks. Hmm. Obviously, I'll drink it. And this is the kind of thing you like. I shall try to lower myself to your level. I brought the cup up to my lips and hesitated. I really was disgusting. I don't want to lose that to that brute. I closed my eyes, and just as I was about to tilt the glass back, I felt a hand on mine. <coughs> If you find it so distasteful, allow me to do it for you. Holding my gaze, with both of us still clutching the, gla the glass, he drank down every last drop. Man! Power move! Power move! Holy shit! He pulled away and wiped his mouth, leaving me holding the empty cup. It's an interesting face you're making. Should I have let you try to... How did you put it? Lower yourself to my level. You barely gave me a chance. Afraid of losing to a girl? Just thirsty. A knock on the door jolted us from our little game and back to reality. 
Uh, yes, you may enter. A train attendant opened the door and bowed. Sir, ma'am, dinner will be served shortly. If you wish, please make your way to one of the dining cars. He bowed again, turned on his heel, and left. A shiver of anticipation ran, to my, ran up my back. Rich people food. Oh, man. Time to have some fun. Come, Jay. Our audience awaits. Let's not disappoint them. Jay rolled his eyes and went to grab his jacket. I swept past him and through the door of the cabin. Behind me, though. Thunk. I turned to look for the source of the sound, but there was only Jay. He was rubbing a red mark on his face, one hand still on the doorknob. Did you just... Feeling that second drink now, aren't you? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> How cute. That's what you get for being a show-off. Acting as though nothing happened, Jay pushed past into the hallway. His face was still red. So whether it was from embarrassment or the alcohol, I couldn't say. Let's go. Being late will draw undue attention. Of course, we wouldn't want that. I followed after him. Ooh. Dining. Oh, this place looks nice. It weren't for the countryside, quickly passing by out the window. One could be forgiven for thinking they were in a very narrow house, rather than on the world's most expensive train. After dinner, we made our way to one of the lounge cars. We kept a sharp lookout for the man who spoke to us on the platform, but he was nowhere to be found. Maybe he didn't even get on the train. He had been a servant in our household when I had known him. I couldn't imagine he made enough money to fit in with this crowd. I decided not to worry about it, and continued to politely chat with the group that had gathered in the lounge. Personally, I'm hoping to find a really nice rug in Gales. I collect them, you see. Oh, good. Good God, enough about the rugs. It's always rugs with you. No one wants to hear about the rugs. Just because you're not interested in them doesn't mean others aren't. Rugs have a rich history. What do you think, Miss Robin? Do you enjoy a good rug? Next to me, Jay snored into his cup. <laughs> Give him a sharp kick in the shin of the table. Keep it together. Let's not embarrass our potential marks. I can't see I know much about them, to be honest. Perhaps you could enlighten me later. Though, a change of subject might be in order for the time being. Your friend appears to be getting frustrated. As usual, I was quite popular with my traveling companions. A young and, dare I say, beautiful woman such as myself could always find someone to talk to. Having an amiable personality came in handy for gathering information. Yes, of course. You're so courteous, Miss Robin. A lady must learn to be delicate in all things. Well said, my dear. Do tell me, have you been to Gales before? Oh. Oh. This will be my first visit. I've always wanted to travel, and this seemed like the perfect time to start. The woman nodded in agreement. An express train from capital to capital is a genius idea, and it's so spacious and elegant. It certainly should be. The tickets only cost an arm and a leg. I'm glad for that, though. It's nice not to have to worry about some of the things I might have to on a more public train. I had nothing to say to that, so I smiled pleasantly. I think only poor people are capable of doing bad things. You must be very privileged indeed. You got that right. Hell yeah, Robin, you got that right. They say travel broadens the mind. Well, I'm traveling for business, so I hope it broadens my pockets as well. What is it you do, Miss Robin? Hmm. I'm with. Well, we could be. I'm a self-made woman. <laughs> exactly that. I'm a self-made woman. I started a company that makes shoes for dogs, and the rest is history. I'm a single boutique in Zephyr at the moment, but one of the reasons for this trip is to scope out a possible second location. Shoes for dogs? Intriguing. I'd love to pick some up for my dear Biscuit. What a smart idea, Miss Robin. You seem to have good business sense. I've been blessed with many talents. What about you, handsome? 
What's your vocation? Uh. The slightest glance at me, Jay gave the vague answer we had agreed upon earlier. Uh, protection. The woman tittered, tittered at that. Ah, protection? How mysterious. Ah, oh, that can't be right. You're much too pretty for such work. Uh. Having been pushed out of the conversation by these two women, the other men at the table had long since left. Jay was at their mercy, and it was clear he didn't like the attention. Ah, he is pretty, isn't he? But I assure you, he's very reliable. Good-looking and capable. You don't usually find that. You're quite lucky, Miss Robin. Surely you intend to lock him away, Robin. If you don't, some other woman is likely to steal him right under your nose. Perhaps you'd like to come work for me, love. I'll pay you twice as much for half the effort. I, I, I don't think so. The women laughed. A man of few words, huh? I like the strong, silent type. Have you thought about getting rid of the eyeglasses? You look even more dashing without them. Ow. I, 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 I need them to see. No, no, I disagree completely. They add to his character. The eyeglasses hint at a hidden venerability. What do you say, glasses? Am I right? Are you hiding a tender side behind that sullen exterior? Uh, <laughs> I assure you, if I was trying to be symbolic, I'd chose to, choose to wear something less inconvenient. I need them to see. Robin, get me out of here. I'm dying over here. Watching Jay deal with these women was extremely amusing, but he was quickly losing his temper. Oh, such biting sarcasm as well. Are you sure I can't tempt you away, my dear? Oh. The line keeps working. Um, now, let's not be naive. It's clear Miss Robin and this gentleman already have some kind of arrangement. I doubt he'd easily part with her. It was, obvi it was obvious they were fishing for the nature of our relationship, but Jay wasn't likely to bite. I'd better rescue him, if only to move this conversation along. <laughs> well. Well. I mean, clearly. I suppose I can't hide it. We haven't known each other that long, but he and I do have an arrangement of sorts. Isn't that true, my love? Uh, uh, as you say. Oh, I was hoping for a pet name, at least. The deep-voiced woman nodded knowingly. Yes, yes, it's as clear as day. I laughed and touched Jay's shoulder. I hired him just for this trip, if you catch my meaning. He's been lovely company thus far. But that took a turn. I hate to ask, but do keep that just between us girls. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Part of the framework of our arrangements that other men don't know we're together. Ha! <laughs> ah, serves you right. This is for that disgusting drink you made me. The woman's eyes grew wide. Oh, how fun! You're quite a bold woman, Miss Robin. Good-looking, capable, and submissive. <laughs> You'll have to let me know what agency he works for. Oh boy! Jay's ears were bright red, a telltale sign that his anger was at its limits. To call my concentration not to laugh. To my dismay, his sour expression quickly morphed into something more sinister. What? N n oh no! <laughs> Since we're sharing secrets, I suppose Robin won't mind if I say how much she likes it when I. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> uh, ladies, if you excuse us, we ought to make the rounds now. <laughs> I left my chair and dragged Jay from his own. Oh, yes, of course, my dear. It's a long ride. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Oop. Bye, handsome. Bye. 
I wandered around the other cars, meeting and greeting anyone who looked particularly interesting or gullible. Jay trailed with the entire time, which made it difficult to endear myself to anyone. How many people want to talk to Ubin while the man glares at them over her shoulder? If you want to be here, you could just wait in the cabin. That would make this so much easier for me. What is this? I would hope you're not planning on doing anything as stupid as robbing someone on this train. Mm -hmm. We are fleeing the country, need I remind you? What would you have me do? Sit in the cabin and twiddle my thumbs? Yes, exactly that! Sit in the cabin with our suitcase that is already full of stolen jewelry. You said that aloud. Shit, the jewels! They left the case in the cabin. What was I thinking? We have to go back. Now! Forcefully grabbed my arm and started to pull me towards the end of the car. The case is fine! This train is full of some of the wealthiest people in Zephyr. What reason would they have to steal from us? Besides, there's security everywhere. You said so yourself. Jay had pointed out earlier in the evening that a few of the attendants looked rather questionable. I suppose in his line of work it was necessary to be able to spot these sorts of threats. No one is going to break into our room. Unless our strange uh, old friend breaks into our room. But you intend to break into someone else's? I intend to be invited, actually. You're insane! Are you even listening to yourself? You need to calm down. The hard part is over. We're currently on a train headed for freedom, and no one is any the wiser. What about the man you recognized, if he realizes who you are? If he does, why would he connect two and two? To him, I'll, be, I'll just be some rich girl he knew years ago who's run away from her father. I probably think you and I are eloping. Fair. And if he gets suspicious, I expect you'll be able to handle him. That's what you do, isn't it? He scowled. You're overthinking this. If you're so worried about the case, then go back to the cabin and babysit it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some drunk rich people to impress with my charm and wit. I wrenched my arm from his grip and walked away, leaving him standing there alone. Oh. Hmm. It's not the case I'm worried about. It's you, Robin. As the night wore on, the crowd in the common areas thinned. I intended to avoid the mantra this morning if I had to, but he had yet to turn up. I found myself back in the lounge car, drinking with a small group of people. My current company was closer in age to me than those I dined with earlier. A much better crowd to work my magic on. I, myself, am excited to bring home some exotic fashion from Gales. I just love Gaelish styles. Did you know it's in vogue for women to have their hair short there? Like a man! Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. She glared at him for a moment and carried on with the conversation. I don't think I'd be brave enough for that. Can you imagine what people would say once I returned home to Zephyr? You might be able to pull it off, though, Robin. You have a soft, round face, but I think you would still look very feminine. Not with that giant forehead of hers. He said it so no one could be, but me could hear, but I gave his foot a hard stomp anyways. To his credit, he tried to wince as covertly as possible. Oh, you, you flatter me, but I don't think I'll be cutting off my hair while I'm there. I'm petite already. I'm afraid of being mistaken for a child. A sharp-dressed man, who had hardly said anything all evening, spoke up. You don't have to worry about that. Mr. Rhodes. Eh? You're much too beautiful to be mistaken for anything other than the woman you are. Hmm. Jay tensed slightly in the seat beside me. Such blatant flattery was likely making him suspicious. Understandably. You'd have to get used to it. Empty platitudes were commonplace with a crowd like this. Yes, I am rather beautiful, aren't I? Ben looked a little surprised that I agreed. Perhaps he was used to his compliments being met with a blushing denial. But I'm not like that. Uh, Mr. F Mr. Rhodes, I do believe you're flirting. I'm just stating the obvious, though it seems Robin is already aware of her own 
assets. How straightforward. Elegant woman leaned towards me and spoke in a mock, hushed voice. Ah, oh, Mr. Rhodes is quite the eligible bachelor, Robin. Smart, hard-working, and dare I say, handsome. Were I not already married, I'd be flirting right back. Who says he'd be interested in you in the first place? She gave the man a playful swat on the arm. Oh, you should be kinder to your wife. I do believe my wife is drunk. The group laughed. A rich bachelor, huh? Well, I think I know who I'm aiming for now. I appreciate the compliment, Mr. Rhodes. He smiled ever so slightly. You may call me Fletcher. Fletcher, then. There you are, Fletcher. I've been looking all over for you. <clears throat> I froze for a moment as a man's voice called from the car's entrance. As he approached the group, I gathered my composure. I thought you'd said you were turning in for the night. I intended to. On my way to my cabin, a couple of chatty women cornered me. Hey there. They traded me to a few drinks, and now I'm feeling sociable again. Ah, welcome back, detective. Hey, detective! Previously slouching from disinterest, Jay sat up and suddenly tucked one hand inside his jacket. Do you intend to shoot him right here in front of everyone? This is going to be a delicate situation. Hello again. And I see some new faces as well. Ah, yes. Forgive me, Ra. Forgive me. Robin, Jay, this is Detective Wren. He's with the Zephyr Police. Police? This isn't good. Is he here for me? Does he know what I've done? Wait. Wren? That's not the name of the boy I'm thinking of. Can I be wrong? Wren smiled at me and offered his hand. I was buzz with a thousand thoughts, but I kept my expression politely neutral. How do you do? A pleasure to meet you, Detective. I shook his hand, which he then offered to Jay. Arm still in his jacket. Jay didn't reciprocate. Instead, he gave a stiff nod. Detective? Thankfully, Ren wasn't phased. Still smiling, he nodded back and took a seat next to Fletcher. A detective. Of course he would have become a detective. This was definitely the boy I remembered, but did he remember me too? Robin, huh? <clears throat> That's a pretty name. <clears throat> you know, in Gales, they say it's lucky to be named for a bird. I had never found it to be particularly helpful myself. Ren, eh? That's, maybe that's because it's not your real name. I could tell he knew I was lying. And he knew I knew he was lying. It was the same twinge of nostalgia that I felt on that platform. Long forgotten feeling of rivalry that nothing else has been able to trigger. I've been searching for that feeling this whole time? Eh, Corvids are considered especially lucky. Whoever gave you the name Jay must be quite fond of you. Hmm. Makes sense that Ren knew I was using a fake name. Could he know Jay was fake as well? Me and my parents? Yes, I'd assume they were fond of me. Ren laughed. It was as warm and genuine as I remembered. You're right. Bit of a silly thing to say, wasn't it? I suppose all parents are fond of their children. Hmm. Anyway, pardon the intrusion. Please go back to whatever you were talking about before I'm rudely interrupted. Oh, we weren't talking about anything important. It was mostly just Mr. Rhodes and Robin flirting. <laughs> Is that so? How lucky for Fletcher. I would have thought a woman as lovely as you would be spoken for by now. By now? What's he implying? <laughs> well. Hey now. I'm not that old. Detective, you wound me. I'm still very young. I don't intend to let any man tie me down just yet. Ah, oh, pardon me, my lady. I never meant to imply you were too old. Only that you are quite beautiful. 
Must have men lining up for their chance to impress you. Do you think your flowery words will lower my guard? I won't be distracted so easily. After all, we've played this game before, haven't we, detective? You're rather charming yourself, aren't you? I'm sure you have all the girls swooning over you. He laughed again. I'm afraid I've never had much luck with women. I'm very good at saying no, so I usually end up getting trampled on. But enough about me. Nice guys finish last. If I'm, if I'm being honest, I assumed you and your friend Jay here were a couple. Hey, I... Uh, mm, that was just a joke. That was just a joke. Don't worry, it's not serious. You seem to assume a lot of things. Ren seems like a genuinely nice guy, not that kind of nice guy. Jay glared at Ren as though he were trying to bore a hole through him with only his eyes. It was Fletcher who finally broke the tension. Besides, Ren is... I'm ass we're assuming that Ren is currently interrogating. You'll have to forgive the detective. He has a bad habit of turning conversation into interrogations. I'm being rude, aren't I? My apologies. I'm inquisitive by nature, so I can get a bit overzealous at times. Or maybe that, or maybe that trampled on comment was a reference to the his past relationship with Robin, in whatever form that was. Past rivalry. Whatever the case. That you took another sip of his drink. I do hope I wasn't out of bounds in speaking so candidly to you, Robin. It would be egregious to try and take something that has already been belongs to something else. Hmm. I try not to show my displeasure at his phrasing. It must have been apparent. Take something that belongs to someone else? Yeah, F uh, Fletcher strikes me as the worse of the pair. I suppose that joke was in poor taste. You're not some man's property. I hope you'll forgive me. It's quite alright. You're forgiven. But let's not make that mistake again, shall we? Let your give Leonard another slight smile and swirled the ice in his glass. He seemed to be finding this awkward conversation amusing. I'm sure Robin and Jay are just acquaintances. Can't imagine she would be so cold as to flirt with another man right in front of her lover. Actually, I've heard some men are into that. Red, no! <laughs> Awkward! Robin, as you said Jay was your bodyguard, how long have you two known each other? <laughs> oh, autosave. Oh, wow, did this actually... What does this do? I'm really confused as to what this... Why am I... Oh, quick saves, page one. Normal saves. I wonder if this automatically saves at every important choice, or just keeps a running queue of six auto saves. These are my manual saves. Quick saves go here. Wonder if, wonder if that's what it is. Yeah, because obviously the first choice didn't really seem to matter because we haven't met Ren yet. But once we start actively spinning fables on the. Uh, Train. We've known Jay quite a while. Oh, we've been together for quite some time now. Hmm, quite a while, you say? So you were acquaintances before you hired him, then? Ah, shit. I told those women something else, didn't I? Uh-oh. Uh, yes, I've patronized him before. It must be nice to have a loyal customer, Jay. Whoops.
It'd be nice to have a loyal customer, Jay. Hmm. She's definitely something. It can be dangerous for a woman traveling alone. So he's accompanying me as protection. An excellent idea, if I do say so myself. It is the first train out of the country. I'd imagine there are a number of uh, ill-intentioned people here. Oh my, I should hope not. As tickets were very expensive for the maiden voyage, I wouldn't think criminals would be able to afford them. You have an innocent heart, ma'am, but not all criminals are lowly burglars or pickpockets. Ben, there's no need to scare our traveling companions with your pessimism. Well, you're right. I suppose suspecting the worst is part of the job description. Ah, please, ex please ignore me. This journey is probably quite safe. Anyway, are you ladies planning on doing anything interesting while in Gales? Ah, my husband and I are going on holiday. I find Gaelish culture quite fascinating. Do you do some Gaelish practice witchcraft? They say the world used to be rife with the occult. Fletcher scoffed. Simple folk tales. Witches really existed. I should think at least some of them would be seen in Zephyr as well. No, no, it's true. In fact, we'll be arriving at the start of their autumn festival. The celebration of the harvest season, as well as all things magical. The name escapes me now, but it was something rather macabre. Macabre. I had heard of the harvest festival before, but I couldn't for the life of me remember what it was called. It was uh, something to do with scarecrows, I think. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so this this just rewinds us through our recent choices. If you're gonna remain silent. I wasn't completely confident in my answer, so I decided to re keep quiet. I have to admit, I've never been to Gales, my Gales myself, so I'm not sure. We did say it was our first time to Gales. What about you, Robin? Raiden flashed me a roguish grin. Uh, no, this will be my first time. I suspected that if I volunteered anything I knew about Gales, the detective would comment on the fact that I'd said I had never been. Yep, wise choice. Looks like it was a good idea to keep my mouth shut this time. It's called the Scarecrow's Feast. Ah, uh, yes, that's it! I see you know your Gaelish history, Mr. Rhodes. We're very excited, aren't we, honey? The woman's husband was long since passed out. He had sat slouched in his chair, snoring. How about you, Robin? Will you be on holiday as well? Uh, I don't know what the best answer is. I mean, we did say we were uh, there to open up our uh, dog shoe place. I, uh, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, those were both. Those were both good. They're subtle tricks in these choices. But this one, uh, this one, I don't know which one's gonna conflict with our uh, earlier choice. Let's try this. A festival sounds well and good, but I'm afraid I'll be short on time while I'm there. I'm traveling for business. Ah, that's right, the dog shoes. As I suspected, Rin was already aware, aware of what I had told the woman for dinner. Dog shoes? Uh, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. My shop makes custom shoes for dogs. I'm traveling to Gales in the hopes of opening a second boutique. Such a genius idea. I wonder how the process differs from making shoes for people. You'll have to enlighten me. Of course. Some other time, maybe. To be able to travel to such an interesting event is a privilege. I only wish I could attend as well. Will you not be staying in Gales, Detective? Ah, uh, sadly no. I'll be returning home immediately when we reach our destination. My business is here, on the train. Oh my, has something happened with one of our passengers? 
I'm sure it's nothing you need to worry about. Now, Fletcher, that's not entirely correct. The truth is, I'm here as part of a murder investigation. The woman gasped dramatically, and Ren's cheerful demeanor became something more serious. And still in his jacket, Jade made to stand up. Hang on. Robin, I think it's time we... A murder? Really? Are you allowed to talk about it? I cut across Jay's that he couldn't suggest we, re we leave. Do you have any idea how suspicious that would look? Use that thick head of yours! Inflicted Jay slowly sat back down. His eyes remained fixed on the detective. Yes, I'd like to hear about this as well. Is there anyone we would know? We're not in danger, are we? The elegant woman leaned in as though she was about to hear some particularly juicy piece of, piece of gossip. Despite his earlier insistence that det the detective was fear-mongering, Fletcher seemed interested as well. Ren glanced around the car, as though making sure no one was listening in. Most of the other passengers had returned to their cabins by now. And only a few of attendants remained with us. Have you heard of a man named Bertram Sullivan? All at once, the color and warmth drained from my body, and the room began to spin. I tightly gripped the arm of my chair and willed myself to focus. Uh-oh, we did a killy. Would be the end if I passed out here. Keep it together. Why, yes! He's a famous jeweler. I do believe he's retired now, though. Actually, he was dead. He was found in his home just a few days ago. Beside me, I could practically feel Jay fighting with himself not to jump up and strangle the detective right then and there. How awful! He was rather old, though. Are you sure it was murder? Quite sure. Last I heard, gunshot wounds weren't a symptom of aging. No, but they can be a symptom of, weak, of a weak will. I heard through the grapevine that it's believed he committed suicide. That is a, the leading theory, yes. But Mr. Sullivan was an extremely wealthy, and, dare I say, notorious man. I think there are many people who would want him dead. Notorious? In what way? I've always heard good things about him. Yes, to the general public, Mr. Sullivan appeared to be a congenial philanthropist. In private, however... I was well aware of what Bertram Sullivan was like in private. A monster. Oh... Oh wow, so we really have only known Jay. Haven't known Jay that long. Much beyond, uh... Whatever brought us to Bertram Sullivan's place. He was rather depraved. Apparently, it was a well known secret in his social circles that, despite having a wife, Mr. Sullivan often enjoyed the company of beautiful young women. Women who would mysteriously disappear when he grew tired of them. That is terrible, detective, but it's bad luck to speak ill of the dead, no matter what sort of depravity they indulged in. Maybe so, but as I said before, my luck has never been that great to begin with. As a man of the law, you can't abide such disgusting behavior. Yet here you are, investigating his murder. Tell me, detective, if you find him so reprehensible, why even bother? Ren arched his brows and gave me a sly smile. Are you suggesting, my lady, that I should ignore such a tantalizing puzzle because of my personal feelings for those involved? Personal feelings, eh? Mr. Sullivan is as bad a, is as bad as you say. Then perhaps your efforts would be better spent elsewhere. Aren't there more important things you could be devoting your time to? Hmm. Now we're just sort of speaking right to him. I like to think I'm more complicated than that. Maybe that's why I enjoyed tormenting you so much. 
It's no fun when everyone lets you do as you please. Ah. Mr. Sullivan was a vile man, but whoever killed him committed a crime as well. And they did so knowing the police would come looking for them. As a detective, I'm constantly at odds with the criminals I pursue, and I don't like losing. Letting this case go cold just because its victim was a terrible person would be the same as conceding defeat. You speak as though you see all of this as a game. Oh, I most certainly do. One I intend to win. And if the criminal wins? I thought for a moment. Then, I suppose, they deserve their freedom. Mm. Mm. Everyone was stunned. No one commits a crime without reason. If they're able to beat me at my own game, maybe they were in the right after all. That's not very... moral, detective. No, but it's fair, wouldn't you say? The question was posed to the group at large, but Ren's eyes were on me alone. The question was posed directly to me. Like how we were p like how we were posing questions directly to him about why he'd be investigating it investigating this in the first place. Fair. Hmm. Interesting. Detective already knew how I felt about rules and games. I can speak this secret language of yours too. Actually, I have to agree. Laws are written by those in power. That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily make them right. There were many corrupt rulers throughout history, and plenty of criminals. Take Robin Hood, for instance. Ren's eyes sparkled with intrigue. Oh, he knows us. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, at this point, there's no denying it. The sheriff used the absence of the king to impose his own selfish will over the townsfolk. But Robin knew it was wrong. <laughs> he was breaking the law. That made him a hero. I should have guessed a girl named Robin would be quite taken with the idea of a righteous gentleman thief. Though I suppose that makes me the sheriff of the situation. I'd like to think I'm the good guy here. <laughs> I think the both of you are rather depraved yourselves. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Though I never claimed to be completely innocent. Ren laughed, and when he spoke again, he was back to his congenial self. What an opinionated group. I'm glad I decided not to turn in early after all. That was all wonderfully melodramatic, Detective, but what does it have to do with you being on the train? All right, the most important part. According to those close to him, Mr. Sullivan was in possession of a Whirlwind Express ticket. Apparently, he was planning on transporting some pieces of his personal jewelry collection to Gales, possibly to sell. We couldn't find either the ticket or the intended pieces when we investigated his home. Hmm. You knew, you, you knew this was coming, but... Hmm. The stakes are clear. The stakes are crystal clear. Jay and I share the slightest of glances. How do they know about the jewels? If that's true, then I should think it would be very easy to find the culprit. You could simply check the passenger list against the current passengers, and whoever is out of place is the murderer. That would be a brilliant idea. Except there is no such list. A trade benefactor made it so that the passengers are able to remain anonymous. I suppose he wanted to protect the privacy of his patrons. Now, oh, perhaps you could search each passenger's luggage for the missing jewelry pieces. If only we could, we would be violating Zafiri privacy laws to do so without just cause. However, if someone were especially suspicious, say I kept catching them in lies. I have the authority to search them, then. So that's how it is. It's a, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you then, detective. 
can't believe the Zafiri police are plagued by so much red tape. Many of my colleagues would agree with you. But personally, I don't mind. All games have their own rules. Anyway, I hope you ladies will stay safe. Please try not to associate with anyone who seems particularly suspicious. As he glanced around the room, his eyes lingered for just a second too long on Jay. Uh-oh. Quickly breaking eye contact, Ren stood up and stretched. And now I'm afraid I've socialized half to death. I think I'll turn in for the night. Turned to me and gave a nervous smile. Ah, so starting such a dark conversation right after meeting. Must have scared you, ladies. I hope we can still be friends. I mean... Certainly. I stood as well. Now that I was so close to him, it was obvious how much he had grown since I had last seen him. Have you always been this handsome? Perhaps I wasn't old enough to notice before. Offered me my hand, which he gladly took. We never stopped being friends, Detective. For a moment he looked genuinely overjoyed, and his grip on my hand tightened ever so slightly. I'm happy to hear you say that. You know, Detective, I'm quite fond of games myself. Is that so? Mm-hmm. I nodded and leaned in close, whispering in his ear. And I don't like to lose, either. <laughs> oh, 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 I like that blushing face. My breath tickled his neck, causing him to shiver. Oh, ho, ho. Maybe if you're feeling stuck, the two of us could discuss this puzzle of yours together. Two heads are better than one, as they say. <laughs> Perhaps I'll take you up on that. Oh, good night, Ren. <laughs> good night, Robin. <laughs> I let go of his hand and headed for the door. Jay followed close behind me. When we, fi when we were finally out of the car, I gasped for breath. My entire body was buzzing with electricity. A fucking detective! What are we going to do? Not here. Wait until we're in the cabin. I tried to walk, but it was as though my legs weren't listening. I stumbled, and Jay quickly caught me by the arm. Careful, you idiot. Must have been worried, because his name ca calling lagged its usual bite. He put his arm around my shoulder and helped support my weight as we quickly headed back to the cabin. I walked in silence, but my mind was swarming with thoughts. So it's a game you want. Well, allow me to oblige. But I hope you remember, Ren. That I never once... That I have never once lost to you. Cheek pressed against the cold, hard floor. A young boy felt his mouth filling with blood. I'll ask you again, and I won't tolerate any more of your foul lies. The stern man wiped the blood from his hand with a handkerchief. One of his rings had split the boy's lip when he struck him. How is that? How is it that my pocket watch came to be in your room? The boy picked himself off the floor and tried to stop the bleeding with his sleeve. He wasn't lying, but Mr. Gardner refused to see when it came to reason when it came to his precious daughter, Mr. Gardner. Uh, I already told you. Roslyn gave it to me. We were playing a game, and oh, Mr. Gardner struck him again. Uh oh. This is the part. See, so for starters, your real name is Roslyn, huh? Ugh. So this is the games that they played. And I assume this is the reason. Bren was sent packing. Mr. Gardner struck him again. Ridiculous! I accept you into my home, and this is how you act? Accusing my own daughter! Of stealing from me. If... If you'd just ask her yourself. He braced himself for another reprimand, but Mr. Gardner, thankfully, held his temper. Do you think I'm a fool, boy? I'm sure she... I'm sure she'll tell me much the same. Heaven knows why, but my daughter's fond of you. No doubt she'd go along with this story of yours if she thought it would protect you. The boy wondered if that were true. Lying was one of Rosalind's favorite pastimes, and if it got him into trouble, even better. Mr. 
Mr. Gardner didn't know that, of course. In fact, he barely knew his daughter at all. To him, she was just another part of his collection, something he could put on display for others to marvel at, never allowed to leave the pedestal he'd placed her on. But she wasn't just some doll to the boy. She was quick-witted and clever. When they played games, she would boast when she won and cry when she lost. She claimed they were, and they were enemies, but when he got sick, the maids couldn't keep her from sneaking into his room to keep him company. Aww! The boy was in love with her. Aww! This watch is a family heirloom. It's extremely old and extremely valuable. Rasta knows she's not allowed to play with such things. Why on earth would she give it to you, of all people? Uh, she said... The boy hesitated. He doubted Mr. Gardner would like the answer. Would it get her into trouble? She said she's supposed to give it to the man she's supposed to marry. Mr. Gardner gave a harsh laugh. And you believed her? My daughter marry some orphan kitchen boy. Preposterous. Now that he thought about it, of course it wasn't true. This was just another one of her little games. The boy's heart sank. He should have known. She never acted that sweet unless she was up to something. She probably intended for a maid to find it in his room so she could frame him for... Frame him for taking it. How stupid could he be? I guess you win again, Robin Hood. Mr. Gardner strode to one of the, one of the display cases that lined the walls of his study and placed the pocket watch back on, on its dusty cushion. He spoke with his back to the boy as he gazed over the various treasures in the case. Go collect your things. I'll have one of the others see you out. Wh what? You heard me. I shel sheltered you in your time of need. You've done nothing but spit in my face. You are no longer welcome here. W wait, Mr. Gardner, I... He was thirteen years old. Who would want to take him in? His payment for his time serving the gardeners had been room and board, so he had no savings either. Did Mr. Gardner really intend to put him on the streets? Where am I supposed to go? Doesn't matter to me, so long as it's not here. Roy grasped for something to say, but he knew there was nothing that would change Mr. Gardner's mind. He gathered himself up and silently made for the door. And Warren... Warren, ah... Uh, hmm? even think about trying to say goodbye to my daughter. I won't have you upsetting her. You've brought this on yourself. The boy felt a knot forming in his throat. Did that mean he would never get to see her again? Maybe that was for the best. He wasn't rich, or strong, or good-looking. You certainly grew in there. You're certainly a hell of a looker now, Ren. He used to think he was, at the very least, smart. Somehow Rostlin always got the best of him anyways, so that couldn't be true either. He had nothing to offer her. She didn't need him. If anything, he must have been a terrible influence on her. After all, he was the one playing along. With her schemes. Maybe in his absence, she would grow into a proper young lady. That's what was best for her. Tears were welling in his eyes and obscuring his vision. He nodded obediently and left before Mr. Gardner could see him cry. In one of the whirlwind's passenger cabins, Detective Wren woke from a restless dream. Ever since he was a child, this particular memory had always plagued him. Tonight was no different. Tonight probably worse than ever, for obvious reasons. What I wouldn't give to heaven for a nice dream for once. As he lay there recounting the day's events, a surge of nervous energy gripped him. The torrent of emotions he'd been trying to keep in check since he saw her on the platform was threatening to boil over now that he was alone. Of course, now would be the time she decided to come back into my life using that silly nickname and everything. 
Ren wondered if she'd given her new friend his name, too. I really am a fool. All those years apart, yet here we are playing the same game as always. He didn't have a choice. There was too much at stake. A chill ran down his back, and, despite the pressure he was under, he felt himself grinning in the darkness. Sorry, Robin. I'll be the one, I'll be the one winning this time. His thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. Ren sat up and checked the time on an old pocket watch on the bedside table. It was nearly three in the morning. Half a heartbeat as he, as he made his way to the door, he hoped it was Robin knocking. If that happened, I don't know if I could keep myself from kissing her. Oh! Ren wondered if she would let him. Hmm. If she did. If she smiled at him with those eyes full of mischief and let him wrap himself, his arms around her. He wasn't sure he could bear to leave her again. But that was just wishful thinking. He knew full well who was calling on him so late in the night. The door opened to a familiar face. Fletcher. Dete detective? I think we need to have a conversation about our new friend, Miss Robin. Of course. Please, come in. Let the game begin. To be continued. In part two. I think that's the one thing I forgot to mention, that this is a game to be released in two parts. And this is the end of part one. I read that as aggressive stuff. I, I read that as aggressive self-voicing for some reason. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the... F put up the full credits. Game by Hit or Missy. Music by Studio Kanazuki. Made with Renpai. Now, it says there are four endings. Too bad and too good. bit unclear what that was. Would that count as a Ren good ending? I'll have to see. I think this will suffice for one video for now. And then next time when we, when we come back to Red Handed Robin, we'll try out some other choices. Uh, get caught up in our lies a bit. See how those bad endings turn out. And then, go for ending number four. This has been... This is all for Red-Handed Robin for now. Until part two. Until then.